So after a few days of playing around with the DexPad and uh, Microsoft Office that's built in to uh, Office 365, the consortium Office 365, I should say, that uh, this uh, combination would be functional for anybody but the most demanding uh, person. So the demanding, oh, sorry, most demanding position. So what, what's it not going to be good for? Let's go with that. Uh, it's not going to be good for the chief financial officer that needs to work on pivot tables. By the way, pivot tables will come up in here. You just can't, you just can't edit them. So it won't be good for your, your, you know, your head of uh, promotions, the person that really is graphics intensive. Yes, and before you send a bunch of hate mail saying that Android, sorry, the Android apps uh, for graphics are very good. Yeah, I know they're fine, but they don't hold a candle to the desktop versions. And a professional's not going to want to use them for their day-to-day -day job. They might use them for uh, touching up things and doing bits and pieces, but that's about all. So, again, we're quite fond of this whole thing. We think, it's, um, we think that this, this DexPad uh, solution is going to be uh, big for our clients. Good day and welcome to our short explanation of using a DexPad for actual work. So, let's get started. This is a Samsung S9. I'm going to uh, turn it on. I'm not going to unlock it just for fun. I'm going to pop it into the dock here. The uh, Dex dock. There we go. It comes up. It goes straight to starting Dex, which you can't see there, I'm sure. Well, let's tip it up for you. Maybe that's ah, gone now. Anyway, and it's coming up here and it's showing the um, uh, username and password I'm going to get in front of you so you can't see it. I'm going to put in my code. There we go. Now, if you've ever uh, worked with one of these expats, you would know that nothing works. Your mouse moves around, but you can't get to anywhere as long as there's anything in the middle of the screen here. You need to clear it off. So there's a screen that comes up before this that does not look like it's taking control of the system, but it has. So here's one. Again, I'm just going to click on this and get rid of it. So there it is, gone. So the uh, let's get started uh, with Microsoft Word. Now, I've installed Microsoft Office from... Uh, Office 365 and it works wonderfully. I would say that the order of the product quality goes the uh, full install on a Windows system, then the online system, uh, which is, you know, you can get to by going to portal.office.com and then into your apps or, you know, OneNote.com or any of the apps you can get into, you can then get to the other apps. So I'm not going to show that, that's a different story. Uh, and then lastly uh, are the mobile apps. The mobile apps, however, uh, as limited as they are, are still very functional. So let's uh, show a few things here. The first thing I'll show you is Word. So we'll just launch Word. Comes up, looks happy. Uh, let's go pull up this um, uh, press release that I had uh, a couple of years ago. It's just garbage now. There it is. And uh, I want to stress something. This does not require you to use cloud services. You can, but you don't have to. So if I click File Save, as an example, I can choose this device. Let's go into Documents, and yeah, I can save it here. I don't have to. It's the, I don't have to use the cloud if I don't want to, is the point. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start rolling through this, and we'll show you each of the menus, and you'll be able to decide if this is something that will work for you. Um, let's go through and I'll show you that if you double click on the header, you get into the header. So that works. That's kind of nice. Uh, I can uh, go into graphics like this one and I can click on picture here. I can change the style, get the idea there. I can rotate, I can crop, I can do all the basic stuff with it. Um, so that's very nice. Uh, and a bit of a surprise, I must say, for a uh, cell phone app. Um, yes, it's done this for years, I know, but it's still pretty impressive. Um, yeah, just it's still pretty impressive that this <laughs> that this works. So let's go into um, let's go into the other menus. Though. Well, let's start with the start with the home menu. So the home menu, you can see what you can do here, all the basic stuff that you would expect. Uh, insert menu, we can insert tables and shapes. Okay, so I can insert pictures. Let's uh, let's grab a picture from my phone. I don't have much on this because it's a new phone. Let's grab my tire. There we go and I'll just click done down at the bottom right here and I can resize and you can see how quick this is there's there's really no lag no delay there we go so you can see I can just move it around and it works um, let's do wrap text and we'll show I can do through all, right, all the usual stuff there's nothing really exciting here what's nice is that it works and when you open your documents here uh, as opposed to using Google Docs or other tools like OpenOffice 
this will not bung up your uh, your your docs. So uh, it was one of the, the uh, early tenants for Microsoft uh, developers was do no harm. So features that aren't here aren't here because they don't work yet. So not because they're not working on them, not because they don't care, but because they don't want to bung up your your uh, your your documents. So let's go into here and we'll I'll draw some stuff and it's really fat. All right, to so get an idea here. Uh, layout, yes, and I can change the margins and so on and so forth. I'm not going to. Uh, smart lookup is probably the neatest thing here. View. Okay, so that's Office, or sorry, that's Word. Let's move off to Excel. Now in Excel, I have a number of things, uh, but they're all confidential. So I'm just going to choose this default uh, template that Microsoft offers. See how quickly that downloaded, which is quite nice. Uh, now let's just show you a couple things you can do here. So I'll change that to... Um, Right, so it you can see it updates graphs and tables, uh, 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 you know, live. There's no you don't have to do a forced refresh. Uh, another nice feature, well, a nice feature that's in here that I don't seem to be able to find in Word, which is really quite odd, is Smart Art. So I can do Smart Art here, and uh, but not Smart Art in in Word, which is I just find weird. Um, so I have to assume it's coming, but it's not here yet. So uh, let's go through process and let's choose uh, this one here. We'll pop that in. But let's try to do something fun. I haven't tried this before, so it may not work. I'm just going to take the smart art. I'm going to edit it. Right? I'm just going to create garbage here. And uh, put some other stuff in here. There we go. Okay, so that's enough. I'm going to take that. I'm going to right click on the smart art. I'm going to copy it. And let's see if I can paste it into my Word document because I don't know if you can. You can! Look at that. So I'm really sure that smart art worked in here, but perhaps not. Well, let's see if it's still smart art or if it's just a graphic. No, it just converted it to a graphic. So, yeah, so it's not editable at that point. But you can still move between the, the apps, which is nice. So, all right, so that's uh, the home tab. You can see what's available here. I don't think there's anything that's, uh, you wouldn't be, that you'd be shocked at. You know, sums uh, and, you know, sort orders, filters, things like that. Insert menu, uh, we just uh, talked about. Uh, draw, same as Word. Uh, formulas, yeah, this is uh, quite extensive. You can see it really does carry quite a few, quite a few things here. So, um, data that's for getting external data, uh, reviewing, yeah, for showing comments. Let's, let's put a comment in here for fun, and there it is. So that is um, uh, Excel. Let's go to. Uh, there's two more I want to show you, and then we'll get off to a couple of uh, brief sort of roundabout issues. So let's go to uh, PowerPoint first. Uh, this is one of the, the oddities. So if I uh, bring up, uh, click the Start button. By the way, I can do that with the Start button on the, I uh, could do this with the Windows Start button. Which So that's the way I normally do things and that's faster. And you can see that that actually works. It's quite nice. So now if I go to here and I think, okay, I just want to start PowerPoint, I'm just going to start typing PowerPoint and you'd expect it to be in the search window, but it doesn't. So if I type PowerPoint, Right? You'll notice it missed the P. It doesn't make any difference. It still caught it here because it, it and you probably can't see it in the camera, but it actually has O W E R in blue rather than white. So let's click on that. And uh, let's bring up uh, a generic one. I have some some presentations here, but they were all confidential, so I don't want to bring those up. Let's do uh, Berlin. So it's downloading it. Let's make it full screen. Uh, by the way, yes, you can double click on the title bars and it'll make the full screen or not. Um, there's a couple of little quirks here that are odd, not bad, just odd. If I right click here, I don't have any, cho I don't have any choices um, uh, to create a new slide. I have to do it up here, a new slide. Hardly a crisis. By the way, if I right click here, I do get some choices. So it really depends on where you are the, to get the context menu up. The context menu is very Context sensitive, not a shock, huh? Okay, so let's go into this and we're just gonna create a very simple um, PowerPoint uh, with nothing too extravagant, extravagant in it. This we'll just call it uh, title, there we go, garbage. Uh, I'm gonna insert, go here and insert a uh, picture. How about my tire again? That probably is a good idea. Everybody wants to see my tire, it's fantastic. So let's go here and click, uh, actually let's click filter 
and whiteboard. There we go. And now we'll click done. And so at least it's a little different. Look, my valve stem. You guys excited? I know I'm excited. Let's go into here and we'll set this to be a little smaller. And I'll set it to be over here just to look a little more professional. And uh, let's go into animations now because I'd like that to have an entrance effect. I'd like it to, uh, let's have it appear. Yeah, let's go with that. And then we'll go here. Uh, I'm not going to put anything useful in here. I'm just going to uh, uh, just click back on the home button, click new slide. And here I'm going to type in three because it's the third slide. I'm sure you figure that out. And uh, what do we want to put in here? Let's put in a, um, let's put smart art in again. So we'll do relationship, something fun. And we'll do the honeycomb. There it is. And this is smart art and it is editable. There's got to be a way to do this in Word. Or, and if there isn't, it just isn't there yet, by the way. Um, it, it will be coming because it doesn't make any sense that it's not there. But anyway, there we go. And I would like this smart art again to have an animation. I would like it to um, have an emphasis effect. I want it to uh, teeter. There we go. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to work with smart, smart art, whether it will or not. But well, we're going to find out, aren't we? And uh, now transitions. So one of the things you'd like to do is probably select a bunch of these by holding the control key or the shift key and selecting transitions, but it doesn't work. You have to do them one at a time. So let's go into here, select the first one, go to transitions. Uh, I'd like this to split. And by the way, I, I attend a lot of these events, a lot of, uh, I attend a lot of PowerPoint events and put on a lot of PowerPoints. And um, just a little tip, Please don't use a lot of animations. It drives people crazy to have it delayed. And if you're going to use an animation, use a similar one frequently so that, it, that you don't have to pay too much attention. Um, it can really get uh, confusing. People will take away the transitions and the animations from your PowerPoint rather than the uh, content of your PowerPoint. So just take note of that. Anyway, that's just my little bitchiness. So let's go here. Here I'm going to choose different ones just to show it to you. So, um, uh, you know, just on principle. So let's go here. Um, uh, by the way, Control Z worked. That was undo. So if I go into here and I do uh, R's, I can do Control Z. Isn't that nice? Okay, so let's go in and um, uh, let's show this PowerPoint. So that'll be under uh, slideshow, and then uh, from beginning. Pretty nice. the teeter. Now note at the, t uh, is it the top here? Here, yeah. So I can move my mouse to the top and I can ink from here. I can mark things up. So let's go here and just add stuff. I can also keep people's attention, the blank screen, which is pretty cool. And here I'll just uh, spacebar and end, it. end the show. There we go. So sure, I want to keep that uh, really ugly uh, <laughs> overlay that I put on. Okay, next, let's go to um, Outlook. So, Outlook. Yeah, no, you could just use the standard mail. I'm not going to, though. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to use the full Microsoft Outlook. Uh, here's a garbage message from somebody who's trying to sell me something. I'm sure she's a lovely person, but I'm not interested. So, uh, here we go. No, I'm going to um, uh, just go down and click Reply at the bottom here, the arrow button. And I can, you know, type in what I want to do. You know, I importing uh, content into here is not as not as nice as it would be with uh, other tools, uh, such as the full Outlook. But I can uh, go in the bottom here and click um, uh, the plus button to attach a meeting, or I can click on the paper clip if I want to attach a file. Choose from device files. Sure, needs access to the files. Uh, DSIM. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to bother. <laughs> but you get the idea. You could. So I cancelled out of that. Uh, by the way, if I click the what would be the file menu. I can see all of my, you know, my file uh, items, my sent items, so on and so forth. I can go into configuration and set up what I would like for a signature. Um, yeah, I think that's really about that. So that is uh, Outlook. Um, uh, the calendar, other functions operate as you would expect. Now, uh, a couple of things you might want to take note of is uh, I can right click on any of these icons at the uh, bottom in the start menu and I can select, pit, select pin to shortcut. And then the next time I come back, this will be down here. So much like you can in Windows. 
Uh, this uh, little uh, uh, you know notification area can be shrunk as well. Uh, when you mouse over them, they do have uh, uh, tips that tell you what they are. Again, good to have. Nothing shocking, perhaps. If you don't have a keyboard with you, you can use the uh, soft keyboard. Um, you can zoom in, you can do all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that's really all you need to know uh, for this product. It'll Again, this will give you the basics. Um, and uh, the dex pad really does seem to be a high quality functional device that turns your high quality functional S8 or S9 into a fully usable Chromebook. There's no lag, uh, videos just play. Actually, just let's just show that. So if I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just bugger off to YouTube here. Uh, so let me go, um, let's just go here. I'll click start and I'll go to, um, instead of doing it through the YouTube app, I'll do it through uh, the internet app. So I could use Chrome. Um, actually, I'll show you Chrome. I like using the, the default internet app, but I think most people prefer Chrome. So there we go. Better if you spell Chrome with it with an R. So there we go. And um, it remembers the last site you were at. I just happen to be on my own site. What a shock. So uh, let's go down to this video. And now you can't hear it because the speakers in this monitor are garbage, but they are here and I can hear it. And I also could plug speakers in. One of the nice things with the Dexpad is it does have, uh, it does leave the, uh, yeah, you probably can't see it. It does leave the headphone jack accessible, and that means you can use that headphone jack with speakers. That's it. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Like that.